Today we'll be talking about the tax consequences of investing in a foreign corporation. This is something that comes up a lot in my practice. I'll have a client who's a US person who's getting involved in an international business deal and wants to invest in a foreign corporation. And a lot of US businesses and individuals mistakenly assume that investing in a foreign corporation is just like investing in a US corporation. It's not. And if not done properly, it can have very severe adverse tax consequences. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. The tax consequences of US persons investing in a foreign corporation. But before we get into it, if you like the content we're putting out, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get notified every time we drop a new video. And if you want some international tax and wealth planning strategies and tips and to hear some of my war stories, please follow our LinkedIn page and subscribe to our email newsletter. Now, last housekeeping matter before we get into the video is a disclaimer. This presentation is prepared for educational purposes only. This presentation is not legal, tax, or any other kind of advice. Each individual circumstances are different. You should seek legal and or tax advice to address any specific questions you may have. So if a US person and that means an individual or company invests into a foreign corporation. There's essentially three possibilities. Either that foreign corporation is going to be treated as what's known as a controlled foreign corporation or CFC for short, a passive foreign investment company or PFIC for short, or neither. Now, a controlled foreign corporation or CFC is a foreign corporation that is more than 50% owned by vote or value by U.S. shareholders. Now, a U.S. shareholder is a U.S. person who owns 10% or more of the foreign corporation. So you ignore persons owning less than 10% in calculating whether this more than 50% threshold has been met. So said another way, if you wanted to calculate whether or not a foreign corporation is a CFC, you would add up all U.S. shareholders owning 10% or more and ignoring those owning less. You would add all the 10% or more U.S. shareholders together and if that number is more than 50%, it is a CFC. Now the tax consequences of owning a CFC is you are subject, the shareholders are subject to subpart F or guilty. Subpart F is a punitive tax regime that taxes the shareholder on certain profits of the foreign corporations whether or not they actually receive it. So subpart F income is generally passive income. So we're talking about rents, royalties, dividends, interest, and capital gains. So subpart F income is taxed to the shareholder of the foreign corporation whether or not they receive the money. This can be a horrendous tax treatment because what if the foreign corporation has substantial passive income that's subpart F income but doesn't distribute it? But the U.S. shareholder is taxed on it. They might not have the cash flow to pay those taxes. So you have to be very mindful of subpart F when investing into a foreign corporation. Now, if income is not subpart F income, which generally means it's active business income, right? Like active trading income or active services income, then the profits from that are subject to what's known as the guilty tax, which is global, intangible, low tax income. And generally, that's taxed for individuals at graduated uh, tax rates for corporations at 10.5%. It can be reduced by using, by using as a foreign tax credit taxes paid by the foreign company. There's also, and this is getting very complex, but there's also a provision where individuals can elect to be taxed like a corporation under IRC 962 and also benefit from that 10.5% taxation or 10.5% tax rate. 
So long story short, if a company is a controlled foreign corporation, you're going to be subject to either subpart F or guilty, not both. Now, as always, there's a bunch of loopholes for this and a bunch of exceptions that if properly structured, you can usually greatly reduce the impact of both subpart F and guilty, but it needs to be done properly and it needs to be planned out properly. It's not something where you want to invest and like figure it out later, right? Now, the other option, and this is going to be, this only applies if the company is not a CFC, okay? So it's not a controlled foreign corporation. And that is this passive foreign investment company status or PFIC. And there's an overlap rule where a company cannot be a CFC and a PFIC at the same time. It's one or the other. So if a foreign company is not a CFC, so it's not more than 50% owned by US shareholders, meaning those that own 10% or more, then it may be a PFIC. Now, a PFIC is a foreign corporation where 75% or more of the corporation's income is from passive income, or 50% or more of the corporation's assets produce passive income or are held for the production of passive income. So these are traditionally things like investment funds, mutual funds, things like that. Now, so if a company is not a controlled foreign corporation, meaning it is not more than 50% owned by US shareholders, who own 10% or more each, then it may be a passive foreign investment company or a PFIC. Now, one thing to be aware of is there's an overlap rule. So it can't be a CFC and a PFIC at the same time. It's one or the other, either a CFC or a PFIC. Now, a PFIC is a foreign corporation where 75% or more of the corporation's income is passive income or 50% or more of the corporation's assets produce passive income or are held for the production of passive income. Again, passive income being interest, dividends, rents, royalties, capital gains. Now, PFIX are, or the US shareholders in PFIX are subject to very punitive taxation. Basically gains and what they call excess distributions, uh, which are certain dividends that exceed more than 125% of the average dividend in the last three years are subject to tax not only at the highest tax rate, but there's also an interest charge, right? So you basically have to allocate the gain or the excess distribution over the entire holding period that you've owned the PFIC and then allocate the gain to each year in that holding period and then that gain is subject to tax at the highest tax rate in effect in each one of those years. And then there's an interest charge as if you should have paid that tax back then in the year to which that gain was allocated. Horrendous. And a lot of times it completely wipes out any sort of actual gain that you get from selling the PFIC or from an excess distribution. Now, there are a couple of elections that can help minimize the impact. One of them is called the Qualified Electing Fund or QEF election, which basically requires you to include your pro rata share of the PFIX income in your income each year and pay taxes on it. But then when you sell the PFIC, you get long-term capital gains tax treatment or a mark to market tax where you mark to market the value each year and pay tax on the gains. You can write off losses up to the amount of gains you included in prior years. And if the foreign corporation is not a CFC or a PFIC, then you don't really have any negative tax regime that, that, that applies to it. If you sell the stock, it's going to be a capital gain, either short term or long term, just like if you sold the stock of a US company. One thing you do have to be mindful of, a lot of people are used to receiving qualified dividends from US companies, meaning they're taxed as long term capital gains and that qualified dividend tax rate at the moment is, is 20%. You can also take advantage of the qualified dividend rate if you are receiving a dividend from a company located in a country that has a tax treaty with the United States. 
But if you get a dividend from a company that does not have a tax treaty with the United States, then there's no qualified dividend rate and you have to pay normal graduated tax rate. I hope you found this video informational. We obviously help people structure international investments all the time. If you need any help with that or you have any questions, please visit us on the web at esquiregroup.com or shoot us an email at info at esquiregroup.com. Again, if you like the content we're putting out on YouTube, please take the opportunity to subscribe and to get up-to-date international tax and wealth planning strategies, tips, and to hear some of my war stories, you can subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on LinkedIn. Thanks again for watching.